Hello and welcome to another episode of Light Talk hosted by Edmund Optics. I'm Scott Bass and I'm here with a very special guest today, Katie Schwartz, Design Engineering Manager for Edmund Optics. Hi, Katie. How are you today? Hello. Doing well. Thanks. Great. Now, just so everyone knows, uh, Katie is very talented, I must say. She knows her stuff. Truly one of the best <laughs> optical designers Uh-oh. in the business. I'm not embarrassing you now, am I, Katie? Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I'll take it. I figured you'd be okay with that. Uh, but in all seriousness, Katie is very active in the optics community and really has built quite a name for herself in the industry. So Katie, with that being said, let's talk imaging, specifically Ooh. sensor sizes. Sure. They keep growing, right? That's, uh, that's what we've seen, yes. <laughs> yeah. So you're an optical designer. Um, what kind of challenges do these large format sensors create for an optical designer? Uh, well, yeah, so not to be, I mean, overly simplistic about it, but if we have a larger sensor, we need larger optics. Um, and when everything else is held equal, uh, larger optics are going to be a more challenging optical design. Um, generally, that means we need more aberration control, which is kind of the crux of doing any optical design. But uh, with the larger format sensors that we're seeing, a lot of times we'll need to add more optics into the imaging train or um, If we keep the number of elements the same, we'll need maybe more expensive glass types. Um, These systems with the larger sensors tend to be a little more sensitive. uh, So we usually have to hold our tolerances tighter or or do something more specialized during the assembly process. Um, But all that is just to say that a larger sensor size does, you know, make a more challenging uh, optical design. Yeah, interesting. So yeah, I know tolerancing for lens design is critical, right? So Mm -hmm. can you expand upon that a bit? Yeah, so I mean, tolerancing, kind of one of my favorite subjects, because um, I'm a nerd, but <laughs> um, but yeah, tolerancing is really at the, really at the crux um, of a lot of the decisions we make, uh, not only just in optical design, but throughout product development. Um, you know, tolerancing, when we make an optical design, you know, it's a perfect idealized version of, of what that design is supposed to do. But in reality, when it, the parts get made and the parts get put together in assembly, there's always going to be some amount of errors. And tolerancing is what we use to define how much, how many of those errors are allowed. And uh, so when we have a more sensitive system, we tend to have to have less errors in manufacturing. And oftentimes the, like I mentioned earlier, the assembly process starts becoming more difficult or we have to go to um, more specialized techniques um, like an actively aligned assembly to meet the, the demands of, of what our customers are asking us for. All right, well, great. Well, thank you. Um, yeah. So while I have you here, what other trends are you seeing out there? Um, You're plugged in. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's yeah. going on. I mean, I I feel like within Edmund, we're definitely seeing a lot of requests for more dynamic environments. Um, You know, a lot of what I worked on, you know, a handful of years ago was more going maybe into a factory floor where it didn't have as many demands on it um, or something going into a lab with a very controlled environment. But a lot of what we're seeing now is people asking for things that are going to see a a wide temperature range. They're going to see, you know, more vibration um, than maybe just in a shipping environment, Um, maybe something that will be outdoors. So we need to worry about uh, rain and and how much water can get, well, hopefully none getting into the optical system. Um, So these kind of dynamic environments, it's not that that's new. We've always had requests for dynamic environments, but there's an expectation about the quality of performance of the imaging system that's still being met uh, with those dynamic environments. So that's definitely something where we're building more skill sets and and seeing a lot more requests around, but it's all challenging, but it's all fun. So Katie, as you know, we we have an Edmund Optics virtual summit coming up next month. Mm -hmm, I've heard. Yes. And it's all about imaging. Um, So of course you'll be playing a part in the event, but I know you are always seeking learning opportunities. So Uh you'll be an attendee as well, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I'll be watching. (laughs) So now what parts of the summit are you looking forward to the most as an attendee? Um, Yeah, so I will say just generally, you know, the team here, even though I'm I'm part of that team, I learn so much (laughs) from the other people on this team. And every time I attend one of these, I'm always picking up some new tidbit of information. Um, I saw on the agenda that there's a session about um, taking your lens spec sheet off the page into reality. Um, And I know Jeremy Govier will be um, part of that. And he gets to work on a lot of talking directly with our customers and applications and, you know, what it means to have uh, the specification on the lens seat on your lens sheet versus, you know, how is somebody actually going to use it in reality? 
And I, I look forward to that because I think a lot of times we design um, some of these products with a certain end application in mind, and then we see a customer use it for an entirely different application. Um, so I think he'll talk a little bit about kind of how you can stretch the the use of some of our different products. Um, so I, I always enjoy seeing that because I don't always get to see necessarily the end applications. All right. Well, thank you very much, Katie, for your time. Always a pleasure and, of course, a honor to speak to you. <laughs> and for those who want to hear more from Katie and many other imaging experts, definitely join us on June 3rd for our next virtual summit. The theme is defining the future of imaging. So lots to learn. The event is free. For us, it's all about just creating thought-provoking sessions with the goal of inspiring innovation, which is in all of our best interests. Right, Katie? Yep. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Great. So check out the agenda, register today, and we will see you next month. Thank you. Thank you.